There's an old adage that breakfast is the most important meal of the day. Whoever said that was mistaken. Every meal is the most important meal, and each deserves to be treated with the same high level of care. When preparing food, it's important to keep the sleeves rolled up. Loose sleeves can get caught and make it easy to make a mess. Keeping a clear workspace also helps with this. Of course, it's always necessary to wash your hands before cooking because you don't want to get any bacteria into your food. I like to use soaps with tea tree oil in them rather than parabens since they can harm your metabolism. I start by preparing the dough using fresh yeast, warm filtered water, Himalayan salt, and pastry flour and extra virgin olive oil I had imported from estates in Sicily. I also add a little muscovado sugar to tenderize the dough and give it some added nutrients. I then place it in the refrigerator and leave it to rise and chill for two full hours before I knead and shape it. I always use a pesto base, which I prepare using fresh ground basil I picked this morning from my garden. I grow most of my own herbs now. At this point, I preheat my oven to 200 degrees Celsius. I still prefer to use a conventional oven over convection because conventional is more versatile and treats delicate recipes more gently. Aspabrock, or as it's more colloquially known, broccolini, brings a nice sweetness to the dish. I had to get up early to get to the local farmer's market on the edge of town, but it's worth it because their produce is always fresher. Once I've sliced up the stalks, I blanch the heads with salted water to make them tender, then add in my silver bead at the last minute to let the flavors absorb. Then I drain them and toss them with fresh crushed garlic and lemon zest for some extra flavor. I start with the pesto base, then evenly distribute the diced asperbrock stalks over it before I add the cheese. Most people use mozzarella or parmesan or some kind of pre-made blend, but I find that a sheep's milk pecorino romano has a bolder, more robust flavor. I like to get mine directly from Rome whenever I can and never anything that's been aged less than a full year. Then I top it all with the tossed greens. At this point, traditionally, you'd add some kind of pork product, like rashers or prosciutto, to add a little fat and salt. But I follow a pescatarian diet so I can get the omega-3 my body needs while avoiding the carcinogens in red meats. I let it bake for 13 minutes, which I measure by listening to the first three tracks on sports. Yes, and can I get that with extra cheese? Mm-hmm. Not today, thanks. Sorry, how long did you say? All right. Yes, thank you. Goodbye. There is an idea of pizza in America, some kind of abstraction, but it is not really pizza, only an approximation something illusory. And though you can hide the changes that have been made since the dish crossed the Atlantic, and you can still slice it, taste it, maybe even sense the ingredients are probably comparable, the art, the craft behind it, is simply not there. <laughs>